Okay, so, in the last class we started this topic uh, acoustic emission testing and we have uh, learned about uh, the basic principle wherein we saw it is primarily due to uh, the elastic waves, elastic stress waves which are generated inside uh, a component when it is loaded. We listen to those waves uh, which are coming out from the part uh, through a sensor. Okay? So, when a part is loaded, if you have a defect uh, which is active, for example, if you have a crack uh, which propagates when it is loaded, then it will uh, generate uh, these uh, stress waves which will come out as sound waves uh, from the sample and now if you have a sensor which can uh, receive these waves and convert them into an electrical signal, uh, you could uh, get a defect signal and that is how you uh, get the indications about the defects in this particular technique. Okay? And then we also saw the sources of acoustic emission in different kind of systems and then finally, we learned about the typical nature and characteristics of acoustic emission. Okay? So, in today's uh, class, uh, we are going to see uh, what are these uh, source parameters, what kind of system you have and how it is used to do NDT. Okay? So, let us first uh, take an example of uh, a source in a given system and then see uh, uh, what are those parameters which uh, control the emission events in a, in a particular uh, system. Uh, for a particular kind of defect. Okay. Let us say we are talking about uh, this initiation and propagation of a crack. So, this is one of the major sources of acoustic emission as we have seen in the last class. And let us say we are talking about uh, mode uh, 1 type of loading in which case you may know that if this is the crack, uh, the loading direction is uh, perpendicular okay, like this. So, in this case, uh, the relationship uh, between the crack size and the acoustic uh, emission will be given uh, by an equation like this. So, let us say this is the stress sigma So, the relationship uh, between the stress and crack size let us say uh, crack radius is A and the detectable A signal. The relationship uh, between uh, these three uh, parameters uh, will be given by this equation. this will be in terms of watts. So, we are talking about the signal strength which depends on uh, the stress which is being applied, the size of the crack and V is the velocity of uh, radial velocity of uh, crack propagation. So, if you remember I had said before that uh, the crack has to propagate in order to uh, generate acoustic emission events. So, this is the V is the radial velocity of uh, crack propagation and on the right hand side you have uh, two parameters one is H which is the distance uh, between the source and the receiver.
So, this is the source to sensor distance and x is the smallest uh, displacement that the sensor can sense. Okay, so, these are uh, the different parameters which uh, control uh, acoustic emission from uh, crack propagation. And therefore, uh, these uh, three parameters uh, sigma a and b are called source parameters. For an acoustic uh, emission event coming out uh, due to uh, initiation and propagation of cracks. We will take another example of uh, acoustic emission event uh, due to a different reason. Uh, so, let us talk about a metallic system and let us say uh, it is a system in which uh, you have a phase transformation. Okay. So, as I have told before uh, this kind of events uh, in a metallic system can also lead to uh, stresses and due to which acoustic emission events can uh, generate. Okay. So, let us talk about uh, an A source from phase transformation. You might have heard of uh, martensite in steels. So, it uh, transforms uh, from a high temperature phase uh, called austenite okay. when you heat it and then quench it fast uh, in, in liquid like water then that uh, high temperature phase transforms to martensite. Okay. And these two phases are very different from each other in terms of uh, their structure and properties and since they have different kind of structures. Uh, the volume of the parent phase and uh, the transformed phase are different and due to that uh, some stresses can be generated which may lead to acoustic emission. Okay. So, that is uh, how it happens in this case. So, let us say we are talking about uh, this particular uh, transformation austenite to martensite. So, as I said uh, this will be accompanied uh, by a volume change also. Okay. So, the stress due to this volume change if we call that as delta sigma will depend on these parameters. Let me first write it and then I will explain these parameters.
So, in this case i is an identity matrix for example, it could be an n by n square mat matrix. C is the stiffness tensor of the parent phase. and therefore, uh, C plus delta C is the stiffness tensor of the product phase. That means, delta C is the change in that stiffness due to this phase transformation from uh, one material to another material. Beta star, uh, this is uh, a parameter known as unconstrained shape change and this is the stress beta naught which could be a pre existing stress or could be residual strain. Okay. D is uh, known as a shape matrix and V is the volume of the transformed phase. Okay, so, these are the different parameters which control the acoustic emission uh, from a from an uh, event like uh, phase transformation. Let us uh, simplify a bit, so that we can get a direct correlation between the stress which is developed due to it and uh, the parameters uh, related to the phase transformation. So, if you uh, say that uh, the change in the stiffness delta C is uh, much lower than C and uh, there is uh, no uh, residual strain that means, uh, beta naught is 0. Then this will uh, simplify to this. Okay. So, here you can see the change in the stress which is directly related to the intensity of the acoustic emissions which will come out uh, due to this phase transformation event this is directly proportional to uh, the shape change 
which is uh, this. So, it depends on the shape change because that is what is going to introduce the stress when it will try and accommodate this change. Okay. And it also uh, depends on uh, the volume of the transform phase. Right. So, these are the two uh, main parameters uh, related to uh, the phase transformation as such because C is a constant which is a material property. As far as uh, the phase transformation event is concerned, uh, these are the two things uh, uh, which will uh, come due to that transformation. One is uh, the shape change because it is going from one material to another material and other is the volume change for the same reason. Okay. So, these two uh, parameters will control uh, the intensity or the level of acoustic emission uh, from a phase transformation event in metallic systems. So, these are two examples uh, just to let you know that uh, you know what kind of event can lead to uh, what kind of acoustic emission intensity and what are those parameters which will uh, control that intensity. Now, we are going to talk about uh, the characteristics of the A signal, we have seen the sources and some of the typical properties of uh, acoustic emissions. Now, if you talk about a particular signal coming out uh, from a particular uh, acoustic emission event, then it will have uh, certain characteristics, certain properties. So, let us uh, go ahead and uh, see them. Okay. This kind of A signals, uh, they cover wide range of energy level depending on uh, what kind of source you have, uh, how big is the source and so on. And frequencies. So, it could have different frequencies also because these are coming out uh, like sound waves. So, they will have uh, different frequencies depending on the source. And there are two basic types so, this can be classified into two types one is known as uh, continuous type. So, these are the signals which are sustained as signal coming from rapidly occurring sources. And second type uh, is uh, burst type. So, in this case uh, you will see in the continuous uh, emission waves suddenly you will see some bursts like this. So, burst type is signal bursts 
in a field of continuous emission. And this kind of uh, signal come from individual emission events. Okay, so, these are the two types of uh, signals depending on what kind of source you have. So, the other uh, properties of uh, these emissions the radiation pattern. is same as ultrasonic waves which we have talked about before. And they radiate energy in all direction. But sometime can uh, become uh, directional also that means, it can grow in a particular direction preferentially. For example, uh, if you have a crack of uh, sufficient length it can become directional. So, any wave it has its own wave form and wave pattern in which uh, you talk about a central frequency and uh, a variation across that uh, frequency. Okay. So, you can either say uh, it is a broad band or it is a narrow band wave okay, depending on whether that uh, variation about the central frequency is larger or smaller. So, acoustic emission waves that you have uh, they are generally broadband and the received uh, frequencies uh, cover a wide range from audible to Four hundred kilohertz or higher. Okay, so this was about uh, the signal properties or the characteristics of uh, the signal coming out from acoustic emission events. Okay. So, before we close today, let us take a moment to uh, summarize today's lecture. In today's lecture, we saw these uh, two sources as an example 
of acoustic emission source. One was from a crack which is uh, propagating and in this case uh, we learn about this source parameters with regard to a propagating crack and these were primarily the applied stress, the crack radius and the radial velocity of the crack propagation V. And the other source uh, that we talked about uh, was from a phase transformation event in a metallic system. And in this case, we talked about uh, this phase transformation from austenite to martensite. And we saw in that case, due to a change in the volume and the shape, when you uh, transform austenite to martensite, due to that change, uh, there is some stress which is developed inside the material and due to that you have acoustic emissions. Then we talked about uh, the type of signals, type of acoustic emission signals and in this uh, we, we saw that there are two types of signals. One is uh, continuous. and the other one is burst type. So, these are the two types of uh, acoustic emission signal that generally uh, come out from samples uh, which are being loaded and in which you have active defects. Then we also talked about uh, the signal characteristics of acoustic emission signal and there we saw what, what is the typical nature or typical character of an acoustic emission signal which is uh, coming out from a sample uh, due to some dynamic events like uh, crack propagation and all those sources uh, that we talked about before. And uh, with that, we come to the end of this class today. So, this is all uh, I will have for today uh, and the rest of the things that we have for this particular technique, we are going to uh, discuss in the next class. So, for today, I will stop here. Thank you for your attention.